Hello and welcome to Wake and Jake. Myself, Jake Stromboli, aka Talking Jake on X, uh, with BBD talking some baseball around the horn today. And I think there will be some around the horn sports stuff too. I mean, Team USA basketball this weekend was about as lit as it gets. Can't believe I said that seriously. Um, did my fantasy football draft, and I'll walk you through. Uh, did our annual fantasy football draft trip in Nashville, which was a blast. Uh, so there will be some lives and times of Jake at the end. Uh, also some fantasy football thoughts, maybe if you're looking for a tidbit here or there. Uh, other than that, I want to go through baseball. I have one thought that's not fully conjured uh, that I want to get to, and it has to do a little bit with the San Francisco Giants, who've been playing a good brand of baseball recently. Uh, I also, my, the draft trip I just did kind of signifies the start of the end of summer, so I just might be in my sad boy thoughts a little bit. Uh, but I was also, I've been drawing parallels to baseball um, over the last uh, couple days or two, I guess day or two as I got back yesterday. Uh, but I do think it's funny, like, the Yankees and Orioles, it, it's kind of set. Like, they're going to be dancing this year. Um, guard dogs, I'd say yes. I mean, they're a win behind, and they've been there the whole season. That I guess even if they fall off, you'd still think they'd be in the wild card. Maybe I need to stop thinking that way. The Phillies are in the dance. Milwaukee's in the dance. The Dodgers are going to be in the dance. That I, I think it's just funny thinking of the questions on a... Imagine if I actually talked like this. I was going to say on a macro level, um, like I've used that since economics, economics, don't know how to say it, um, had to retake one of those classes, paying off in a big way, know nothing about it. <laughs> Anyways, um, no, I think, uh, and you know, people get mad when I start off with the Yankees sometimes, sorry, talking Yanks, popular show, um, like the Dodgers... They're getting Mookie Betts back today. They just DFA'd Rosario, which that was a surprising one. Oh, yeah. batting average in the threes. Uh, OPS in the sevens. Better versus lefties, which has some Yankee fans in the office interested. Don't think he'll make it to them in the August waiver wire. But, uh, again, shows that we're talking about the Dodgers on a different level. Um, you know, a week or two ago, the Mariners were dying for hitters with an OPS in the sevens. Um, and here they are DFAing Med Rosario. Part of that is it's for Mookie Betts. Uh, and the Dodgers are a sneaky comedy show when you see, like, you know, Kike's still there, <laughs> uh, Chris Taylor. <laughs> like, they they still have their guys, kind of like when we laughed about the Braves bringing back Rosario, who they just DFA'd in there in the dark place. Um, the Dodgers, their biggest questions are going to be around pitching the rest of the way. Um, and I don't know, it was one of the crazy thoughts that went through my head today, and I just saw, I think it was our, our guy Bradford Doolittle at ESPN had, uh, you know, eight things we're checking in on uh, while the season winds down. Uh, the Dodgers pitching staff, uh, right now it's listed uh, as our guy Glass now, Clayton Kershaw, Gavin Stone, Jack Flaherty, Walker Bueller, supposed to start on Thursday. So I just think it's a fun conversation with them, like, we could come into the postseason with Glass now, Flaherty, Walker Bueller, all kind of friends of the program. That's nice. Um, Clayton Kershaw, who one of the best pitchers to ever play, but people are worried about him in October, and I am on the unfortunate side of like, yeah, you kind of should be. We've seen just a lot. I know technically the data supports that. I know last year he was banged up, and I think that was a slight outlier because they needed any pitching, but. I don't know. There's data points. Anyways, um, the Los Angeles Dodgers at this point could head in with Glass now, Flaherty, Bueller, Kershaw. Gavin Stone has put together a nice season um, and feeling pretty good pitching wise. Or uh, if one or two things were to go awry, their pitching could feel pretty thin. So I think uh, as a Dodgers fan and for the rest of baseball, uh, it's going to be interesting to see where their rotation lands. You know who I did see is throwing. Pretty good for them recently. Hmm. Shohei Otani. Oh. Yeah. Um, 
I'll be very interested if that becomes more of a storyline. Um, that could be fun to watch. Uh, more fun for them is Mookie Betts is back in the lineup playing right field. Forgot he played out there. Um, and I think he's batting second tonight, splitting up Shohei and Frederick. Um, Tay Oscar's been really good for them lately. Like, that Dodger lineup is going to end up in a good spot. Um, going to be very interesting to see what goes on with Tommy Edmond, Max Muncy for them. They've, they've got their series of questions. Um, but I think most of them are going to be, again, these are very first world problems that it's going to be who in their rotation is ready to pitch and how do they look come October, uh, along with some of the other injury things. Milwaukee, I mean, I, I, I was laughing today as we did talking baseball. Um, the fact that they're getting D Hall, DL Hall back and then they optioned him to the minors. Um, again, shows just how that organization runs and operates differently. He was supposed to be the Corbin Burns piece. Uh, and these two teams are about to play tonight. Look at that, full circle. Um, Brew Crew are going to make the dance. Jackson Chirillo, popular name around the office and talking baseball today. Um, I mean, the Brew Crew's questions are like the same questions we always ask about the Brew Crew. Do they have enough high-end talent? Are we too dramatic about high-end talent? Like... Would we have said that with the D-backs last year? That they have the high-end talent? Or did they peak at the right time? Um, I think Milwaukee's waiting for their season where that happens. Uh, their questions, and hey, I guess I do want to throw this out to the people. You guys always know your team better than us. I guess, Brewers fans, what are your biggest questions um, as you head down the stretch? Is it Devin Williams kicking in a gear? He got his first save over the weekend. Um, is it just basically who's hot for them heading into the playoffs? Um, cause I don't know. Willie Adamas has kicked into gear again. Uh, William Contreras after a couple, uh, man months, I think he's picked it up and Jackson Chirillo has become a different ball player. Um, and I guess the other thing that I don't know if I clearly said this as I was going through the top, top dogs, as I click on my way to the Philly, the Phillies page, um, every other team's biggest query at this point is making the playoffs. Like, yes, you have injury concerns, or is this pitcher going to kick in, or what? Um, I feel like we've turned a point in the season that, um, you know, you're looking at, if you're the contenders who are pretty much locked in at this point, uh, the conversation has started to turn like, hey, we've actually did our work this season. What are our question marks as we head into the postseason? Um, for the Phillies, man, are they out of their slide yet? Uh, they thought they were after they beat the Dodgers, uh, but they lose a series over the weekend, three out of four to me and Dalton Snake. Dalton with the King treatment down there. How would he like that? What a world. Um, he's a massive Snakes fan. Guess it makes a lot more sense than me. Um, they are not. They're not out of their losing ways yet. Uh, they have a series two-gamer with Miami, four-gamer with those pesky Natinals, uh at home that you'd think that would right the ship for them. Luckily for them, the Braves have been floundering in the Mets. Uh, not floundering, but, you know, West Coast trip. They actually they did get bullied by Seattle. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Phillies, their, their biggest thing is, like, let's get out of the death spiral and then we can ask our more questions. Uh, they're getting Taiwan Walker back. They just lost Dylan Hayes. Otherwise, I guess Ranger Suarez is kind of the big one for them. I mean, he was arguably the best pitcher for the first three months this season. Uh, and what's going on in their bullpen? Hoffman and Estevez? Sure. Um, Phillies... <laughs> I mean, they're going to come into the playoffs and be the Philadelphia Phillies we've seen the last couple years. Uh, their question mark is just currently getting out of this damn slide, uh, which was the Yankees question mark a couple weeks ago, and it seems like they are out of it, which is good. Uh, the fodder in Yankee land right now, lineup-wise, it's kind of whatever. Uh, when you have Judge and Soto, a lot of your stuff gets covered up. Uh, and that also includes Giancarlo Stanton having a big weekend. Yankees have a very good record when he is in the lineup. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, sure, they have smaller questions around their leadoff spot. Alex Verdugo's been there for a little bit. He's had a good week, hasn't had a good season. Um, Jazz and Glaber towards the end of the lineup has been nice. Will a guy like Rizzo uh, make a run at coming back this season? That'll be interesting. For them, the conversation is just fluid between the starters and the bullpen. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens down the stretch. Uh, Marcus Stroman had been really bad for a little while. He has his first good start. Um, the, you know, the Yankees rotation right now, the guy that should be their one starter as of tomorrow, I was going to say Luis Hill. Carlos Rodon has really turned it on his last four starts, and that's awesome. Uh, where the conversation gets interesting is, A, Garrett Cole exists, who also had a good start over the weekend, and if he looks anything like Garrett Cole... I think you give him the pill of game one of any playoff series because he's your guy. Uh, the Luis Heel conversation is going to get really interesting as the Yankees' bullpen still has some big question marks around the back end. Luis Heel has the type of stuff that seems to translate the best to the bullpen. Um, a, would the Yankees put him in that position? Because come playoff time, for a young arm that they should be protecting, that's actually a little scarier. Like, like They'd have to like do it. Him in the bullpen. Right. Like, Luis before. Heald pitching in back-to-back -back days as someone yeah. who hasn't done that before is actually probably scarier than having him go pitch a five-inning playoff start. So, um, I don't know. I, in my head, I haven't mentally pictured that happening. I heard it's something we've talked about throughout the season, but now that we're actually, like, here, it's like, wait, is that a button they would press? Um, I heard Mark DeRosa say it on MLB Network the, like, five minutes I watched this morning. I can't. I've quoted this three times now. Um, nice guy. Talks like a Northeast guy, huh? Um, Makes sense. He was like, it. he's like, that thought shouldn't be crazy and isn't crazy because um, Clay Holmes hasn't exactly been a steady Eddie in the back end. Um, and a couple of their guys got roughed up yesterday. I guess the bullpen is the question, and I think for the Yankees, which should be good news for Yankees fans, there's going to be an attachment of how good does the rotation look the final month and a half. Because those body parts are going to be the ones that get interchanged with bullpen pieces. Um, so that's going to be, that's kind of the Yankees' interesting note to follow as we go. Um, let's see. The Cleveland Guard Dogs, I'd say it's safe to assume they're in the dance. Uh, at one point, their lead was down to an inning and a half. Um, man, <laughs> here's what you need to know. This guard dog season that has seemed like it's had just a little bit of fool's gold to it, they are 93.2% to make the playoffs. Uh, they're starting pitching. Alex Cobb, 36 years old, made his season debut for Cleveland this weekend. Know who else is going to pitch for them on Tuesday night? Matthew Boyd. Didn't know he was there. How about that? Talk about baseball a lot. Uh, their bullpen is still nails. It's the best bullpen in baseball. ERA, whip, hits allowed, home runs allowed. Their starting pitching numbers are borderline ugly. Uh, and their offense, more or less, um, has kept a pace through the season. Um, boy, is it going to be funny to see if they start limping down the stretch because that AL Central could open right up um, with the Twins, three and a half back, although Trev says feels like they're limping and hunting for arms. And the Royals, that I guess the Guardians don't feel out of the woods yet, and maybe that's just being horribly rude, uh, as their record is a half game different than the baby birds in the Yankees. Um, Baltimore, I don't know. I was going to, their question I was going to depict in a good light uh, with Jackson Holiday homering in five out of his last 10 games. Um, I don't know. I know their offense kind of isn't fully clicking uh, like you'd expect it to be. Uh, but I don't know. Their, their question marks, I mean, Cedric Mullins, can he turn anything around? I mean, their rotation would seem like it's going to be Corbin Burns, Zach Eflin. Um, okay, so I guess the question is going to be who steps up in their rotation. Um and they have some bullpen questions as well, as it looks like Craig Kimbrell's been uh, kicked out of the closer role for a second. 
Um, he's done this before, and Dirty Craig usually kicks back into gear, but Sir Anthony Dominguez gets the save for them the other day. Uh, so their pitching questions maybe not too far different from the Yankees. Who's hot in the rotation? How does that affect the bullpen uh, on the Yankees' Nestor side? Uh, he's been really good against lefties, uh, that they may need a lefty arm back there. And he hasn't been great starting. So uh, interested to see where that lands. And then the AL West race. I mean, these two teams are currently fighting for one spot. Seattle, who's pitching, showed up in a big way over the weekend with more than enough hitting. Houston, whose hitting showed up with more than enough pitching uh, in some of their pitching splits recently. Um but that's now become a two-dog race as the Texas Rangers kind of full-blown floundering, lost five straight uh, series. And I think Evaldi joined Max Scherzer on the getting their arm checked out um, in mid-August. Bad sign for them. Um, man, I think those AL, AL West race and AL, AL East race, like I've talked about, are signing up to be electric. It'd be Dude, if Cleveland comes back, we might have all divisions uh, up for race in the AL, which that would be that'd be a lot of fun. Would that be good for the sport? Do people really care, or is that another like downfall of the wild card? Like Baltimore and the Yankees are dancing. The AL Central's not guaranteed for wild for a wild card spot, probably. And the AL West currently three games how if they get hot. Um, I guess that'll be interesting because there could Door's be not closed. There could be teams in the central and the West fighting for the division, uh, without a chance to make the playoffs. Uh, for our NL fans, there might be some site disappointment that I haven't guaranteed the snakes a postseason berth yet. I understand why, or the San Diego Padres. Like I think those two teams questions. The Padres are playing amazing base. So are the Snakes, dude. NL West. Have at it. I would say those two teams, if they're playing like they are, those two teams are a week, week and a half away from being like, we're in the dance. We're lining stuff up. I know the Snakes are having com conversations about a potential six-man rotation. Tori Lovello shot that down. Uh, so that's one of their question marks right now. Padres just got Disco Joe Musgrove back. Uh, so those teams are, I mean, those teams really don't have a ton of questions right now. It's just, it's just guaranteeing themselves a spot in the postseason. And will they bring the Dodgers in for a fight down the stretch? That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, the other daydream baseball wise that I was having this morning, um, that again, I, I'm more so looking to see where I stumble and, and seeing, uh, I guess seeing if there's any thoughts I'm missing on it, um, one of the better teams in baseball right now is the San Francisco Giants. Like, if you were doing a top five hottest teams in baseball right now, I think it's San Diego. I think it's the Diamondbacks. Are the Giants next? Uh, the Chicago Cubs are on a nice little eight and tour in their last 10. Uh, Houston, I guess they've been hot for a little while. You can argue that three of the top five hottest teams in baseball for two weeks, uh, if you want to extrapolate that, I think you could a little bit, uh, are in the NL West, and they're not the top team. Uh, the Giants, 7-3 and three in their last 10. I think it goes out to like 12-4 uh, and four in their last 16. Their pitching staff uh, is currently, they're the team that traded the guard dogs, uh, Alex Cobb. Snell has kicked into another gear. Logan Webb is leading in innings pitched. Um, they also, who else was balling out for them? I just had a disappointing moment. I was on an ESPN's page, uh, so I clicked to the Giants because that was going to be an easier click for me than going to Fangraphs. Those pages were in different worlds about the information and quality you were getting. Um, and a little disappointed in our friends at the Worldwide Leader. Um, but they've been out on baseball for a little bit. Not a surprise. Robbie Ray has been twirling the pill for them, uh, along with Hayden, Show Me Your Bird song. Uh, the Giants are playing a good brand of baseball. They're about to play four with Atlanta. Uh, if they handle that series, which Atlanta's still sliding, by the way, 
the Giants, who are playing some winning baseball right now, four with Atlanta, two versus Oakland, and then they have the White Sox. Like, if the Giants split with Atlanta, those five games with the White Sox and Oakland should be three to four wins minimum. Uh, they're playing a better brand of baseball than Atlanta right now, that if they do well there, um, what are we going to say about the Giants in a week and a half who are two games above 500? And the whole thing that I've been delaying this whole time, um, I was thinking about baseball expanding again the other day because it feels like it's coming soon. Maybe it was me being in Nashville, a potential landing spot um, for baseball's expansion. Um, but something that's coming... Uh, with baseball's potential expansion that I do think is going to happen. Um, I think the three divisions are going to go away, uh, and I haven't decided fully how I feel about that yet. Maybe they don't need to. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Like, it just feels like they're going to add two teams. You'd assume an AL and an NL. Because uh, what? It's 15 teams in each league right now. Yeah. So if it was 16... You'd assume, um, I'd assume eight and a f- eight, either an like eight that. and eight or a four by four. Four by four gets that interesting because then you can maybe make it so that you get more of the division games again in that way. I don't know how the math works, so maybe maybe I shouldn't speak at a turn there. But it's okay. Um, so you know, right now with the wild card, you're getting the six top teams across baseball. Um, divisions still matter, and this is the part that I don't have figured out, because in theory, part of this this daydream would be the Yankees and the Mets being in the same division, and part of what makes baseball good is rivalries. Like, if you're... MLB won't make... (laughs) MLB won't make expanded baseball where the Yankees don't play the Red Sox at least as many times as (laughs) three other teams. Yeah. Like... The Yankees have to play the Red Sox. Uh, Otherwise, I will protest and fight this. Mm. Um, But I guess I was trying to daydream about how to get the San Francisco Giants into the playoffs, and they still haven't done enough yet. Um, They're sitting behind the St. Louis. They're a game and a half out of the playoffs, so I don't want want this to sound like it was too daydreamy. Uh, I guess we're currently getting 12 teams in the playoffs. I feel like if they make it 32... Same as the NFL. They can kind of do same structure, four and four. Man. Division winners division winners still matter, and you can have division rivalries. Get a good amount in there. One team gets a bye. Does that create more playoff? Yeah, teams? I guess. Being I guess. able to say we did this like the NFL makes sense as something MLB would want. I was having some sad boy NL Central thoughts uh, because where the Giants are currently at, and this is horribly rude because the Brewer season has been incredible, soup to nuts, farm to table, that these two teams should not be compared currently. And maybe I'm just too excited about the Giants' hot streak. I guess there's something about the Giants' sex appeal as a team that could throw out a playoff rotation of Logan Webb, Blake Snell, Robbie Ray. Um, if you want to put uh, the Kyle Harrison... Hayden, show me your bird song platoon in there at the end. Uh, the Giants, I do think they have more sex appeal as a playoff team, which feels horribly rude because the Brewers have been great. And maybe this is just the same starting pitcher argument, how MLB needs to make the starting pitcher sexier again, uh, whatever that would mean for the game. Um, I don't know. I, I started thinking the divisions and expanded. And, you know, the Giants... They would currently be the second best team in the NL Central. Or excuse me, they're a half game back of the Cardinals, so that could change by tonight. Um, but the San Francisco Giants play in a division with the Dodgers, who we barely talked about, who have an incredible record and just got Mookie Betts back. The Dimebacks and the Padres, you're defending NL champs, the Dimebacks, who are playing the best baseball since July 1st. I think they've won their last eight series pretty good. Uh, and the San Diego Padres, who feels like some sort of premonition or book coming true about what this franchise is supposed to be, uh, 
that I feel like the San Francisco Giants are up against it a little bit. For them to make the playoffs, it currently feels like four NL West teams would have to make the playoffs. And that, hey, we've never seen that before. Maybe this is the year that we do see that. Um, But it does feel like a really impossible ask. And that's where I started daydreaming a little more about the expanded standings. Let me see where my... Uh, where my San Francisco Giants are. First, the West, they've been fine, 21-19. and 19. Uh, Their only losing record. Here's a fun Giants trivia question. The San Francisco Giants have a winning record against the NL East. They have a winning record against the Central. They have a winning record against the West. They have a losing record against Interleague, 14-18. and 18. Um, So, hey, maybe I'm not helping them out. Maybe that's what they want. Um, I wonder how much the Rockies cook their books there. Sorry, Rocks. Love you. Respect you. Um, Good against righties, bad against lefties. An interesting case of things and stuff. Um, I guess when we add those two teams, Nashville? Port? Portland? Hmm. Is Vegas happening? Seems like it is. Nobody knows. Um... Charlotte, Montreal want back in. Charlotte's interested. Montreal, there's always a rumor there. Was there another Florida city that was start? Orlando, the Orlando <sighs> Dreamers. They always, sure are. Always. One of our favorite things ever, if you haven't seen that. <laughs> Man, Nashville, Portland. I don't know. In my head, those two make sense. Or no, Salt Lake. There's Doesn't Salt Lake think they're oh. getting a team? Um, yeah. In my head, Salt Lake and Nashville, by the way. Two fantastic spots. Um, Sign me up for that. Uh, But, yeah, I guess I don't have my head wrapped around the expanded divisions. I don't have what the playoffs would look like. You know the league always wants more playoffs, and we're already in a sketchy spot um, with the top 12 teams coming in, kind of. There's some ALNL stuff there. Uh, But, again, that would would probably be an east and a west kind of like a mix between basketball and the NFL. I haven't gotten there. I guess if you have, let me know. Um, Because right now if we expand it to 14, uh, my Giants get close. I don't know. I guess I need to stop drinking the Kool-Aid. And I'll stop daydreaming about stuff that I don't really have control of. And I guess I got scared a little bit midway through that. Because don't give me less Yankees Red Sox. It It already feels thin. I need more Yankees Red Sox. Uh, so that was a little around the league and a little daydreaming. And speaking of, there's for the YouTubers, there's our Orlando Dreamer sign. That guy. Is that Winter Meetings? Did we miss him? Um, I'm trying to remember if that was Or was that just meetings. him operating alone? I think that was just like a separate presentation. To who will never know. Um Thank you to everyone who does tune in on the YouTube podcast has been killing it too. So no, no shame in your game, but wherever you like to listen is the perfect place. We do make pretty faces and we su- we would love, love uh, your subscription. So subscribe, please hit the like button, bake the algorithm. We used to say a lot here. Um, all right. Let me do a little bit of Nashville for you. Um, a little bit of fantasy football and a little bit of big sports. Um, and I'll, I think I'll tie it all in as one story because this was my, my Nashville weekend. Uh, for those of you that don't know, which is probably a lot of you, uh, I, do an annual, I do an annual fantasy football trip. Uh, and it's, I don't know if ironic's the word, but um, I am the 12th guy in the league. Uh, the other 11 grew up together. Uh, one year they needed a 12th. Uh, one of my buddies was a coworker, actually a former coworker at the time. Uh, and I had met a few of them. I was living in Dallas. My buddy and a couple others lived in Fort Worth. They need an extra body who was a sporty boy. I was said sporty boy. Um, and now there were some debates whether it was eight or nine years running, but we've done a draft weekend. Uh, the first weekend had one round of golf. This year had three rounds of golf. It's very much become a golf trip. Uh, with some fellowship uh, that was thrown in, especially this year. We did 36 holes in one day that allowed a full, quote-unquote, fellowship day in Nashville. The word fellowship was thrown around a lot in the chat, if you couldn't tell. Um, 
But yeah, most of them are located in mid, in the Midwest that we've done a lot of Midwest locations. We've done Fort or we've done Dallas, uh, Oklahoma City, Tulsa. A lot of them are from there. Um, and a lot of people were having babies a couple years ago that those became the safe bets. A uh, driving trip for the bulk of them. For a couple of them, some exceptions were made because the winner gets to choose where we go. So that's a nice feature. Uh, Denver, Salt Lake, and I, I think there was one or two repeats. Um, but this year we did Nashville, uh, which was a slight bold selection because, again, a little further from some of those locations. Um, known as kind of a party town, uh, even though we're losing some of the tread on our tires. Is that a way to say people mm-hmm. are getting old? Um Awesome weekend, uh, showed up on Thursday, round of golf, uh, went out to Nashville a little bit, tin roof, good spot, uh, danced a little bit, tequila sodas. Uh, the next day was the 36 holes, exhausted. Uh, it's a lot of golf. There was also a gap between the two rounds, which was like a lunch, and it's mm. just an extra hour and a half, two hours. So if you're playing four and a half hour rounds of golf with a lunch, with another round of golf, uh, you know, that turns into a 12-hour day at the same golf facility. Uh, and if you're hitting good shots or bad shots, dictates a lot of your day. Uh, so, a good time. I'll always appreciate being outside. Um, our ah, God, our four-man group, we really struggled down the stretch. Couldn't make a putt. Ain't that it. Um, come back that night. We watch a little bit of Olympics. And we're all old and slightly tired from the day and the night before. We called it. Uh, no business in us going back out. Uh, we're getting getting older. We watched uh, we watched the four by one hundred relays. That was a blast. Uh, as the Olympics are over, a little kind of yeah. sad. Uh, happens quick, but it's fun. Wake up the next day. Normally would be a golf morning. We did not do the golf morning because we did thirty six the day before. This is when we did the fantasy football draft. So hey, beep 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 beep. Mm. Fantasy football update. Uh, and I know, and credit to the part of my take guys, one of their hilarious running jokes they had early on was nobody cares about your fantasy team, um, which is half true in con in concept. I will tell you, uh, who I got and who I was surprised to see hanging around this Um, time of year when it can be about like draft help. I mean, I'm still pretty early. Like I, this is one of the earlier drafts because I think we were negotiating around some people's weekends, um, that, you know, we had the first round of preseason games that everyone was looking at their phone waiting for the first injury to drop. Uh, or the Ayuk trade, which hasn't really happened yet. Hmm. Uh, a lot of rumors there. Uh, I had the seventh pick. Justin Jefferson felt safe about it. Good floor. It's a PPR league. Um, the one fantasy oh. podcast I listened to on the way down said his stats were good, even with the bad quarterbacks they were rolling out last year. Dobbs. I think a guy named Chad Hall. Or Jalen Hall might have been throwing yeah. the ball for them last year. BYU. I think we talked about him once or twice on here. And I should tell the people, uh, I told you guys to name some names about potential football people to hop on during football season. I also talked with Pennick because I want to be like, hey, where are you guys at? Um, I think in a perfect world, there will be a rotation with maybe Pennick, uh, maybe Bobby Skins and Rosie at some point, uh, and maybe some other football content creators. And we'll see who... Jives with our jib. Um, One thing, uh, a pick I ended up being excited about, I got 12-person league reminder, Dalton Kincaid in the fifth round. Uh, Stephon Diggs is out of town. They didn't really replace him wide receiver-wise. They did with their second-round pick, Keon Coleman. Dalton Kincaid was good for them last year, uh, and I think he's only going to get better. So I was like, okay. Uh, And I think there was a drop-off in tight ends after that. So I felt pretty good about that. Uh, Pacheco, Debo, Camara, for those that care. Uh, got some guff from my buddies about Pacheco. It's kind of where the board lined up, and running backs are horrifying now, and I know that offense will be some sort of good. Um, Debo's just kind of the guy. Uh, you love Debo. I love Debo, man. Uh, I got the two meanest runners in the game, Pacheco and Debo. So doesn't matter for fantasy points, but that's nice. Um, other picks that could be fun. Uh, it was Zay Flowers and Keenan Allen in the 6th and 7th. feel like one of those guys will be good or Keenan while he's healthy. Uh, Devin Singletary in the 8th round for the New York G-Men. They still have to run the ball a lot. Again, I know not a lot of people hype for that offense, 
Uh, but, I mean, even if he gets 80% of the touches Saquon gets, who's their backup now? It's some rookie who I, I, rookie like, that I think they wasn't kind of believe with. in, but right. obviously hasn't proven anything and not like a high pick. So, was half into that. Brock Purdy at QB. Uh, didn't love it, but he was there. Kirk Cousins. Eh, that's fantasy football, unfortunately, right? Uh, you're either paying for one of the good guys or you're taking a chance on them. Um, I did think I was going to end up with Jaden Daniels and someone snaked him before me. Mm. I just love Jaden Daniels. There's a chance he's this year's good running QB that puts up points. Uh uh, last picks I kind of liked, and I don't know if I actually like them. Uh, Jamison Williams in the 11th round was there. Uh, former first round pick. Uh, you know, his rookie season kind of got ruined because he was coming off an ACL. So his second, like, full year playing football, uh, that Lions offense took off last year. I could see him taking a leap. I was surprised to see him in that range. Uh, And then this one I doubt is good, but Ricky Pearsall uh, ended up with San Francisco, uh, and he was a big-time combine riser, really good at Florida. Um, And then the combine, he tested great. And then I think everyone was doing like, wait, is Florida not that good at football now? And maybe this guy is really good. And he's on the 49ers. So if they get rid of Ayuk, uh, Ricky Pearsall, I don't know. I I just – I think that's a potential guy. We're talking 13th round. Guy that could bring something to the table. Um, There's my draft analysis. If you loved it or hated it, good. Happy for you. What else happened on that Saturday morning? Saturday morning draft, by the way, really nice. There's a couple donuts hanging around. Mm. Um, Nobody really hung over. Just a nice way to get into the day. 9 a.m. to 12. You forget how long a draft can be, but... It's fun. We've got the stickers. We do the whole board. Yeah, when you guys like when you do a draft. It's a nice it's, uh, time. You're in person. There's no clock. There's a couple times you're like, "Hey, let's let's go." Mm. Um, but you're also trying to be gentlemanly. We didn't have a ton of plans. Uh that that Saturday, you know, it was the plan was to go out in Nashville, but that's a tricky question. There's so many bars and stuff. Like, what are we doing? Do you go country music? Do you just aim and shoot? Luckily, Nashville is so insane that we were able to aim and shoot pretty good. The one thing that we said, aha, this is enough of a boy plan to make work, the USA basketball game, USA versus France, 2.30 p.m. on that Saturday, perfect. Let's not go to one of the crazy bars. Let's find a sporty bar. Uh, We did that a couple blocks off Broadway. We had a nice little space, perfect place to have a couple drinks. Game got closed for a little bit. And then uh, to watch Curry do that. If you're a longtime Wake and Jake listener, you know I love me some Steph Curry. I've even got myself yelled at by people before because I forget some of the kids are still obnoxious sports fans. They're like, how could you think I love Steph Curry? Uh, It's because you're not, like, adult enough yet to realize that that's awesome. Like, a lot of my buddies are OKC Thunder fans that have been hurt by Curry before, uh, and they're all good, man. Like, they're all appreciative at this point. They did say, like, (laughs) we still have butthurt feelings from Clay, um, because I don't don't think that was third quarter Clay. I think that was Houston, right? But, um, yeah, they, uh, they said they had more bad Clay feelings than Steph still. Um, but Steph put on a show. I, I was really excited. There's something about the Olympics. There's something about when the USA puts out an actual dream team of sorts. And, dude, I that's going to go down as really iconic. Like, I feel weird sometimes. I don't appreciate sports at the kid level now. But I remember collecting dream team cards at gas stations. There used to be one gas station I'd go to on the way to visit my grandma. Um, And I was always hoping to get the cool USA Dream Team cards. The original Dream Team that's like before my time, 92, like that kind of changed basketball. Like, you know, you want to do like uh, Marty McFly disappearing. Like, does Joker exist if that Dream Team never happened? Like, probably not. Um, All the international teams. France's team is good. Um, It's always fun seeing the guys who do get elevated, like a Fournier gets to be a guy on the French team, which is funny um, because in the NBA, he's kind of not at that level. Frankie Smokes out there of talking Knicks fame. 
Um, and I mean, dude, something about Wemby being on that floor with LeBron and KD and Steph, that's going to go down as like all time and iconic in the basketball world. Uh, it's a real treat for that. Okay. It's good. They, uh, I was, like the game of this Olympics was that comeback game against Serbia. Like that was right. crazy good vibe in in this office about, around that game. I I was I was pretty stoked to have been the one that turned the game on when it started, and then slowly people creeping in and and, and getting interested. So um, that was fun. Yeah, I uh, unfortunately our first golf round was during that game that everyone was just checking their phones. Uh, which was a little daunting in lifetime because I just mentioned we made our plans around that. <laughs> yeah. So seeing, you know, the USA down five late, down 11 at the half, it was like, oh, get ready for the Serbia-France game hmm. uh, in Nashville, iconic. Uh, that worked out in our favor. And the other thing I'd like to say is we're in a funky part of sports. It's the dog days of summer. It's August. Um, nice update, Jake. Uh, this uh, golf weekend fantasy football golf weekend has now overlapped with two of my most memorable sporting events i guess this usa game i'm i don't well i'm not sure how much i'll be yelling at kids about knows another an awesome one the mayweather mcgregor fight Uh was on a draft weekend and that was sick man i mean packed bar we kind of screwed up. We did our draft at the bar, and it was just way too crazy. Easily, like, our worst draft. A lot of repeat picks, um, which was aggressive. But, um, so I don't know. It's always funny seeing how sports and business works, trying to find out, like, the holes in the schedule. And I know that's not exactly how the Olympics work, but uh, pretty cool. The two, I like, kind of big-time sporting events in my time, in my time, landed in that arena. Uh, went out in Nashville after that, danced a lot, danced a lot both nights I was out, uh, and it was the good kind, like, we kind of had an open space, we were being to ourselves, uh, and that's a hint, I mean, we're all, we had one single guy with us, and he doesn't like talking to people, so, Mm. uh, we're kind of girl repellent, which ironically enough can be, it, like, in a way it attracts girls, because we're comfortable with ourselves, and we're happy, um, but God, we also, I was dancing pretty good. Uh, a couple of guys, you know, we've got our own moves. Everyone brought it to the table. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess, well, if you're looking for dating advice, go watch me and Joe's on Super Seducer right. um, on uh, JJTV. Uh, did I have anything else I was going to tie in? It was draft weekend. It was big sports uh, events. It was fantasy football. End of summer. You've been saying that a lot. I was been saying that a lot. Uh, no, I think for me it's just uh, just that event kind of signifies it. Um, and I was trying to bring that in with all the baseball. So um, if you haven't been to Nashville, wow, that city, that city brings the noise. Uh, literally just these bars that are six floors kind of packed, not packed, but packed. And you're just like, wait, there's this many people out here turning up Titans preseason game. Oh, um, and before we give love to Dan, I did, uh, I had a good laugh, um, over, (laughs) I got an Insta DM from a Jonathan W. I don't know how much of a shout out he wants, or if he listens to this, uh, he did reply to one of my Insta stories and said, you want big three basketball tickets for Nashville Sunday? Uh, the answer mm. was no, uh, but God, do I appreciate that. Speaking of iconic sporting wow. events, was that the Beasley game? I think so. Could I have been at that? Never fly oh. out early, folks. Fly out early. It's so much better. Um, hey, August Wake and Jake. Thank you, guys. Uh, We'll be back. Probably some baseball. Uh, BBD's got a format. We'll see what else we got. Otherwise, tell them. Wake and Jake is a production of Dan Patrick Productions, John Boy Media, and Workhouse Media.